through how to use HiSys to find the properties of um, some pure component. Okay, so I have HiSys open. HiSys might look a little funny because I'm running it through Remote Labs on my Mac, but you should be able to get to all of these things um, on one of the lab computers or uh, if you're using Remote Labs on your own computer. So I'm gonna open, I have HiSys open, and I'm clicking new over here, and I'm gonna say new case. And here we go, we get our favorite place. So now I'm gonna pick a component. I'm gonna go down here and hit add. And uh, what shall we work with? Let's, uh, let's pick something from the homework, such as methanol. So we type in methanol, and there it is. Click add, and now I have added a chemical. You could add a lot of chemicals and, and work with many things all together, but right now let's just work with this one. I can't do anything yet because I need a fluid package. So this is where we're gonna add our equation of state. So I've clicked fluid packages, and again, I'm gonna hit add. And here are all of our choices. Now, some of these things are what's called activity models, which we will be getting to later in the class. Uh, some of these things are equations of state. Some of these things are really, really specialized to a particular kind of stuff. So for example, we do have the steam tables in here. The ASME steam is just straight up the steam tables. And if I click on that, it's gonna tell me, hey, methanol is not something covered by the steam tables, which is a, a really nice error message to get. So I hit cancel, cause I'm not gonna use that. Uh, so I wanna pick something that isn't Peng Robinson, we've already got a calculator for Peng Robinson. So how about, uh, let's see, can I use SRK? Yeah, let's use SRK. So I've just selected SRK. I'm not gonna edit any properties. I am basically ready to go. See, I've got a nice green okay down here, no red flags over on the left. So now I'm gonna hit the simulation button. And here we have our friendly simulation space. And I'm not looking to do any uh, unit operations at the moment. I just want to use this for some properties. So all I have to do is create a stream. So I'm going to drop a stream right there. I'm going to double click on this stream and start editing it. Okay, now there was some question about how I use this to get exactly uh, the properties at one atmosphere in saturated conditions. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now remember, Gibbs phase rule tells us if we specify two things, We've specified everything. And if one of those things that we specify is in fact that it's saturated, uh, we're good. So I'm gonna say the vapor fraction is gonna be exactly one. So that's like giving it a quality of one. And then I'm gonna give us a pressure of one atmosphere as specified in the homework. And uh, because we need some material present, I'm gonna say we have one kilogram per hour. Now you'll notice this isn't converging yet. That's because it doesn't know what substance I'm using. So I'm gonna click on composition here, and I'm going to say that we have a mole fraction of one, precisely one, methanol, because that's the only thing there. And you'll notice, boom, I got green, this converged. So if I go back to looking at conditions, you'll see everything else auto-filled uh, because we've calculated. And in fact, it's giving us information for both the liquid phase and the vapor phase. Let me make this annoying to change window a little bit bigger so we can see everything all at once. Uh, and it's saying we must uh, have a temperature of 67. So that is the predicted boiling point. Now, uh, if you want a better way to look at this that gives you much more information, I'm gonna click right here on properties. And you see when I click on properties, now I've got Oh my gosh, all of this stuff. It's pretty much everything that this model is capable of predicting. So we've got viscosity, we've got, um, well, we don't have CV. It's not doing, it's not predicting that version of CV for us, but it's giving us, uh, for example, uh, CP. Uh, it's giving us uh, specific heat. It's giving us, oh, that's funny. I forgot that this can do costing. I obviously haven't entered any costing information, so it's not giving uh, us any information about that, but it's giving us enthalpy, for example. Now, remember, enthalpy is almost always calculated relative to a reference state. 
Uh, we spent a, f a fair amount of time working with this a couple of years ago, and we can't or we couldn't a couple of years ago, and I don't think we can now, we could not force Hysis to have a reference state of our choosing. We are always stuck with Hysis's reference state, whatever the heck that is. Uh, which means you can use Hysis as a calculator and do your own energy balances, but because we're not exactly sure where that reference state is, you must do all of your calculations in Hysis, and you can't do some stuff by hand in order to find enthalpy. Right, so you can't yourself go do CP delta T and then add that to a enthalpy that you find from HISIS. You've got to be finding all your enthalpies here. Anyway, enough of that digression because we were here to find a uh, saturation boiling point. So is that something that we find listed here with all of these properties? Hmm, da da da. Scrolling through to make sure I have been complete. I don't think so, but that's okay because we have our temperature back over here under conditions. So by specifying exactly uh, a vapor fraction of one, or in fact, we could say vapor fraction of 0.5, right? Because while the stuff is saturated, it is always gonna have the same temperature if we have a fixed pressure. So you see, Hysis is predicting for us 67.09 degrees. And that's how you uh, find information uh, from Hysis using a stream. Yeah. And now 